Good morning. Uh, I'm here to present the uh, uh, approach for metamorphic testing for uh, verification and uh, fault localization in industrial control systems. So our approach addresses the use case uh, of ABB uh, and uh, we propose uh, a method methodology for uh, verification of uh, uh, industrial control systems and uh, for a vulnerability localization. So for uh, the verification of uh, control industrial control systems, uh, we have a metamorphic testing approach and uh, we continue with the uh, fault localization uh, using the metamorphic testing approach. So metamorphic testing uh, is proposed as a, uh, as a solution for testing applications which are considered non-testable uh, due to the test oracle problem. And uh, uh, for, uh, for applications where uh, uh, it is uh, it is hard to uh, specify uh, an explicit test oracle. So in in for testing such systems, uh, 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 metamorphic relations are defined based on behavioral properties of the system, and uh, test cases are generated based on an input output pair identified as per the metamorphic relation. And in this approach, we compare uh, uh, the outputs of multiple test executions. An example for uh, metamorphic testing would be uh, booking.com, where uh, we search for uh, hotels in Finland. And if we continue the search for uh, hotels in Turku, uh, the results uh, should be a subset of hotels in Finland uh, as Turku is in Finland. So we don't need to uh, know the exact output of the system, but we measure the logical consistency between uh, multiple test outputs. And for the fault localization uh, uh, approach, uh, we use uh, the metamorphic testing approach and the output of the metamorphic testing phase and use that to locate the faulty program elements. And for this, we use uh, two sets of execution traces, one of successful tests and one of failed tests. And we collect the program spectra information from these execution traces. Uh, in, in this approach, we use uh, a branch count spectra to measure the number of times each conditional branch is executed and this information is used to calculate uh, a suspiciousness score uh, to program elements at uh, branch level. And the approach has a metamorphic testing phase uh, in which we define a metamorphic relation for the system under test. And uh, we, have, we have a seed output and a morphed output. And we, we use this test input against the system under test and uh, uh, derive a set of passed and failed tests. And this goes as the input to the fault localization phase. And the fault localization phase also takes this input, the source code, and it generates a fault report, which is uh, which would be helpful for the developer in program analysis and debugging. And uh, this approach uh, addresses the use case by ABB, uh, which is a load position system, uh, a camera based uh, tracking system to determine the position of a hanging crane load position. And it uses LED markers attached on the head block or spreader unit. And the LPS system is identifying the markers uh, attached on the head block as the valid markers to determine the position of the load. And uh, this is the LPS system where a camera module would send inputs as XY coordinates, and these inputs are processed by the LPS system and used to uh, calculate the position of the load. 
Uh, so this system uh, has a vast input space, but using metamorphic testing approach, uh, we identify few inputs from the vast input space and use this to de derive a metamorphic relation. So we use the marker coordinates and the uh, number of marker coordinates and the hoist position as the main inputs and to derive if the functional behavior of the system is as expected. And uh, for this LPS system, uh, the classification of the markers is used to derive the metamorphic relation. So we we have a seed input which has only the uh, true markers or the uh, the scenario where the camera is only sending uh, three markers as input, uh, and it it is a successful execution trace. So and uh, the next morphed. Tran morphing transformation, we add noise to the system uh, to the input and test the system uh, for these coordinates where we have the true markers and the noise. And we compare the output of these uh, two executions and the expected behavioral property of the system is that uh, it should be the system should be able to identify the true markers with or without the presence of noise. And the details of the metamorphic testing approach is uh, uh, published in a conference paper. And uh, I invite you to visit the paper for more details. So during the metamorphic testing phase, uh, the, the test results indicated uh, were classified into three categories. So the system was uh, able to detect the true markers uh, despite the presence of noise. And uh, in few cases, system was not able to uh, detect uh, the valid markers. And uh, the case where the functional uh, safety of the system would be compromised is when, uh, is when the system identified the wrong markers as the true markers. And we, we classified these uh, outputs as a set of past tests and a set of failed tests and executed these against the system under test for uh, localizing the fault. So in this phase, uh, we instrument the program for collecting the program spectra information. So we, we introduce uh, counter variables at branch level uh, to measure uh, the number of times each branching condition is visited during the execution of past and failed tests. And the test execution is uh, uh, test generation and uh, execution is automated and uh, we use the OPC UA data communication protocol for communicating uh, the test cases from Python uh, to the application running on codices. And uh, when the tests are executed, we collect the program spectra and this is used to calculate the suspiciousness scores. So we use the uh, three well known uh, spectrum based uh, fault localization formulas, OKI, Tarantula and uh, Yakad for uh, calculating the suspiciousness score. So the concept works based on how many times a basic block or a statement is executed in uh, failed tests and past tests versus uh, how many times it is not executed in failed and past tests. And using this approach, we calculate the suspiciousness score at uh, block level in each module and uh, at module level, uh, we calculate the uh, we we take the maximum suspiciousness score, which is uh, corresponding to a particular block in a program. So the cold graph uh, is is uh, providing the details of the interprocedural call structure of the program organization unit. And a control flow graph is generated for each module. And this control flow graph is annotated with the number of times uh, a, a past test or failed test takes a particular execution path. And the uh, path in blue 
represents the one which is taken by both past and failed tests and the path in uh, highlighted in red uh, represents the ones taken by failed tests and the green represents the one taken by past tests only. And uh, in the arrows, uh, the arrow edges are labeled uh, with a suspiciousness score and the uh, most suspicious ones are the ones executed most number of times by the failed tests. And uh, in this figure uh, highlighted in red is the execution path uh, of a failed test using a metamorphic group of test inputs. So this this is a metamorphic slice uh, which represents the program statements which were executed by a failed test using a metamorphic group of inputs. And the green path shows the execution path in case of a past test. So in 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 this uh, control flow graph. Uh, Visually, it would uh, help the developer in program uh, analysis by reducing the scope of search or analysis uh, to the most suspicious parts of uh, a program organization unit. So we we extract the suspicious statements and the corresponding uh, uh, suspicious variables from the metamorphic slices and uh, heat maps are generated to highlight the most suspicious elements in a particular uh, module. And to continue with uh, localizing the fault, we continue with the extracting the definition and usage of the variables uh, for which uh, the high suspicious score is associated with. And uh, uh, the analysis of the definition usage chain of the suspicious variables from the metamorphic slices is currently performed manually, but uh, we plan to automate the approach. So uh, in case uh, of, a, of a particular module, uh, the data flow analysis, uh, if you see the, uh, the program logic flow, uh, the most suspicious uh, element could be the one where the we where the failure is uh, uh, visible as an output, but when we perform the data flow analysis, we go back tracking the definition and usage of the suspicious variable, and uh, we have to resolve the local references of the variable, how it is defined in uh, different modules in the program flow. And uh, uh, the error would be. Uh, manifested at a different point and uh, we we track the error propagation path of the suspicious variables uh, to to localize the fault so this definition usage chain analysis of the suspicious variables uh, reveals the propagation path and the starting point of the error and uh, uh, in, in, in case of the use case provided, it was caused by an incorrect, incorrectly initialized variable. And uh, we, we tried uh, reinitializing the variable and uh, removing the hard coding wherever it was not correct. And then uh, the output was like uh, we, we could not get the failed test anymore. And the benefits of the approach is like, uh, for this particular use case, we have uh, 701 executable lines of code, and when we extract the metamorphic slice of suspicious blocks, it reduces to 233 lines of code to analyze. And uh, the same at basic uh, block level, which is extracted using the uh, branch count spectra. So the scope reduces to 65 basic blocks, and uh, at the variable level, uh, we have 170 plus variables uh, in the program organization unit, and we end up with 60 variables uh, to analyze uh, to localize the fault. And we also plan to conduct uh, a, a controlled experiment uh, among researchers and users of the tool uh, to measure the benefits of uh, using this approach.
Thank you for your attention. This injected instrument, the, the code, is that optimized today? Yeah. Yeah. So, so how big part of, of this whole food chain is automated there? I guess you had a, I, I think I missed that slide. Uh, so the test generation and test execution is automated and instrumentation is automated and the control flow graph and the call graph is uh, generated automatically. So the data flow analysis part uh, where we extract the metamorphic slice and the suspicious statements and variables. So to continue from there with the data flow analysis, currently it is done manually, but we plan to automate that as well. Everything until the, 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 yeah. the analysis. Yeah, it's a chain of processes. Okay. How many fault did you get back in your data? Uh, so uh, we have identified uh, two fault types, and uh, the fault type that we addressed here uh, is when the system was not able to identify, system was identifying the wrong markers as the true markers, because that was the case where the functional safety of the system was uh, affected. This was on uh, on code that we have been running successfully on on cranes for ten years, and mm -hmm. they found uh, a part of, of of the code that that wasn't that good that we actually talked about. Without us, Christina had a question. Yeah, no, I have a short question. So, did you generate the metamorphic relations automatically? No, at this point we have uh, manually derived the metamorphic relation and only one metamorphic relation is defined uh, using the marker coordinates and the number of markers. Because I'm thinking that's an important issue. To yeah. Identify the most fault to detect the, the ones that have the highest uh, fault detection capability. Yeah, uh, for deriving this uh, metamorphic relation, we also need this domain expertise. So, mm -hmm. and in, in this case, it's it actually works because we have the sensor, we are on site during the commissioning phase, we get lots of data. So at that time, it can be a part of the testing. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, it would be nice if we could do this before, but it's hard to simulate all this data. So, so it's it's actually nice to have this combination of, of real data and then analyze it. And it will take uh, several years to create all this data to test it. But with a small amount of data, you could like make a, a, a superset of, mm -hmm. of, of all possible data. 